Hello. I'm going to do my very best to actually sound eloquent and not completely exhausted. <laughs> Our uh, hugest event of the year is tomorrow, and all of my brain matter is focused on that. So I'm going to um, do a Q&A with you and let you guide me on what you're interested in. I'll give you a quick background on the difference between TEDx and TED, how I got here, and um, just kind of understand who you are in a way that we can impact you in the community. Um, so TED, technology, entertainment, design. People sometimes think the E is education, but it's entertainment. Um, TED started years and years ago uh, as a very exclusive, very expensive, private elite club of people that if they could afford it, were able to um, come and hear speakers in person and have these really amazing weeks together. Um, but in 2005, when the internet kind of exploded, um, Chris Anderson came on the scene. And he took over as the um, director of TED proper. And he decided that he could use the internet to help um, promote and spread these ideas that matter. And boy, has it. Um, they, in 2009, USC um, was the first to approach TED and ask for permission to do a locally organized TED event. And it had never been conceived before of that happening, but they gave USC the power to do that, and it was wildly successful, and thus was born TED X. <coughs> So, I don't know if this will stand up for us. So TEDx was born in 2009. There are, uh, I think globally, I, around 400 to 450 of us who are licensed TEDx organizers. And X simply means locally organized TED event. TED has given um, a very strict grouping of rules to protect their brand that they then trust us with to use locally to um, promote them and hand off brilliantly curated speakers, highly produced, edited, gorgeous material in their lap. They did none of the work, and, <laughs> and they get all of the credit. <laughs> um, and, and that is really to their gain now, because globally, we are all propagating a million amazing speakers for them. There are a few ways that this comes to be, and I'm sure you're very interested in understanding that. So with sincere honesty, who in here would love to give a TED Talk? Who would have the courage to stand up and give a TED Talk? So a lot. It's a very sought after stage. Um, I tell my speakers that when they stand on that red circle that it is sacred space. And and only a few are chosen to be there. So I'd like to talk through how that happens, how we can use Pasadena to promote our ideas here on a global stage, and um, be able to work together to use this brand to build community for ourselves, as well as spread ideas that matter and are going to create conversations for change. Um, so we have three. Um, licenses from TED. We have TEDx Pasadena Women, which is what we were founded as in 2015. We have TEDx Pasadena, and we have TEDx Pasadena Salon. These all have different rules associated with them, and we, um, we expanded from TEDx Pasadena Women to be able to use TEDx Pasadena which is a more um, user-friendly license, basically. So tomorrow's event is a TEDx Pasadena license, but our brand is TEDx Pasadena Women. That's what we are founded as. That's what we identify as. Our, our umbrella, however, encompasses those with muted voices, is what we really believe in and strive to inspire and protect and promote. So it's not a women's organization. It's an organization for advocates of women, advocates for people of color, advocates for the LGBTQ plus community, 
advocates for people that wouldn't necessarily have the ability to spread their voice loud and be heard on such a stage as this. So we, we try to identify those people in our community and, and bring them to our red circle. Um, our audience is of several, growing, growing, growing right now, several thousands, and about 40% of that are male. So we, we are not a women's organization, and tomorrow at the Huntington, which is where our event is, we will have many, many different um, human beings in our audience. Someone had said to me this morning, am I allowed to come if I'm male, Mike? <laughs> So the answer is no, Mike, you can't come. But no. um, So that I just want to clarify that, that because of the brand we've chosen to identify with, it is an all-encompassing um, truth for us. Now, TEDx Pasadena Salon is a newest, our newest license, and we have been using that to be able to string together the huge chemistry and connection that happens at this big event tomorrow. We were having it once a year, and everyone left on such a high, and then we didn't see each other for another year. And so we decided to be able to, once a month, offer a free event. The, the event tomorrow is not free, nor is it cheap to produce. <laughs> but um, the free events, what we do is we choose one speaker, we go into the home base, so if we, we'll choose Alan for our example, and we would have him speak on his own home turf. And we invite between 50 and 75 people in the community for free into that event. We tour the space, we talk with the speaker, and it's a much more relaxed Q&A experience. Tomorrow's event, um, you don't, there's no Q&A from the stage. It, the speakers do go out for lunch and, and et cetera, and you can interact with them then, but there's no dialogue from the stage. Um, and so these salons are much more relaxed and they've been very, very successful. Supply Frame Design Lab has been an incredible partner to us, as has Cross Campus, who lets us have our office space here. Um, and, and Supply Frame Design Lab did an amazing salon for us where they invited women only, which is the first and only thing we've ever done that was women only. And we invited um, women into their space to discuss with one of the leading designers, engineers from um, Two Bit Circus, Maria Redden. She came and she talked with women about the benefit of failure and how we as females tend to resist that. So we have this magnificent conversation in Supply Frame, um, and then they invited women back on a first come, first serve basis to have an eight hour day um, in the maker space creating in the safety of failure. <laughs> and and we are, we're trying to work with our community in that way so that we can bring people into their world and expose one another to each other. We did one at the Carnegie Observatories. Um, we've, we had the highest ranking female of the Los Angeles FBI um, speak recently. Um, so it, it's a, those are extremely valuable because you get to touch and feel and taste where these people actually exist. Okay, so to your point of raising your hands, who wants to give a TED Talk? Let me explain how that happens for us. You can get on that red circle one of three ways, through application, nomination, or invitation. I'll use this year as a good example. We had 259 applications this year for 13 spots on our stage. Of the 250 applications, we chose one. The nominations and the invitations tend to be a little more robust. And here's why. The applications tend to be flies to light, and I don't want to decrease that. But TED is very, um, very protective of their space in that they never allow politics, they never allow religion, and those two are very important because they don't want to shut down half the room. They only want ideas that are going to open minds and create conversations that matter. 
So those two things are weighted. The third sacred rule up here is no self-promotion. That's the tricky one. And that's where the applications tend to draw people that are interested in promoting their book or promoting their new entrepreneurial brilliance. While those have value, Ted doesn't let it up here. So there's no subtle Nike swish allowed on your shirt. There's no um, subtle mention of your um, URL on your screen behind you. There's no uh, name dropping in your, in your talk. And you can't mention your book. You can't mention what your place of employment. And when and if it is allowed, if you've seen talks where that happens, Ted has approved it. It's very strict. So the um, process by which we work with speakers to help get all of that out of the way is long and arduous. <laughs> and if you seek to give a TED Talk, you should know that don't lead with politics, religion, or any kind of self-promotion, because that will get you out fast. Um, there are ways that we can self-promote you. And that's in your bio, that's in all of our social media, that's in all of our bragging, um, that's in the MC that steps on stage to introduce you and, and can give a quick subtlety. TED Talks don't even say your name. It is about the idea. You would not stand on the red circle and say, hi, I'm Heather Brunold, this is what I'm gonna talk about, this is who I am, this is my degree, this is, they don't care. All that would be edited out if it happened. So um, I really, really respect that. And I, I feel very honored to be a part of being a bit of a gatekeeper for this organization because it has such value in the one idea that's going to create a catalyst for change, for conversation, for, for depth of relationship. Um, the, uh, the application process also which ties into the nomination and the invitation, we read all of it blind. So I don't care if you're um, Hillary Clinton and you've applied, your name's wiped out. I don't care if you're Mike from Echo Factory who's a dear friend, your name is wiped out. You just become the idea. So there are several essays, you explain what your idea is, and it goes to a committee of seven people they read it completely blind, and they have a rubric that they're basically grading the fit of your idea for the Pasadena community, for the contemporary conversation that's happening globally, for the relatability, there's measures. And then everyone gets ranked on a CUME score, and you fall one to 250. The top 50, then we reveal the video that you've been asked to send, we reveal your identity, and we reveal kind of who you are in the global context. This is important to us because if the top 50 are all white, middle-class women, middle-aged women, it's not gonna happen. So we, we really value creating space for those with muted voices on our stage. But remember, there's 200 to, I don't even know how many um, TEDx's even in California, United States and then globally that you can tap into. And we're very um, helpful in helping, if you don't fit here, then we're happy to, I, I sent a speaker last year to New Delhi, she got a TED talk there, we sent someone else to Santa Barbara, they got a TED talk up there. So we are a very tight community um, in the TEDx world and we, we help promote good ideas. So it's just not, it's to at least say that if that doesn't happen here in Pasadena, it doesn't mean it won't happen elsewhere. We can help that. Um, I'd love to open it up to questions because I, again, I'm severely tired and I don't know if I'm making any sense. Um, I will, I, I would love to pass this around. If you are interested in um, joining us tomorrow, I'm going to pick one business card out of here to give you a simulcast, a free simulcast tomorrow. The simulcast happens at the Huntington Library. Um, we sold out in a matter of a few hours for our event. Um, it's an all-day event. It's from 8.30 to 5. 
Uh, there's 500 in attendance. And um, I have to give a shout out to Echo Factory. They built all of our collateral for us and completely redesigned our website and, and gave us language around our theme, which is Rise. And it totally came to life because of them. Um, the, the generosity of, of people like Echo Factory, Supply Frame Design Lab, Cross Campus, um, we would not be in existence if it were not for them. So if you would like to come experience that tomorrow, I can only squeeze one of you in there. The simulcast um, happens simultaneously to the actual live filming. Uh, we have, I don't know if you're familiar with the buildings there, but we have Haga Hall for the simulcast and Rothenberg Hall for the filming and then Rose Hill Garden Court for all of the interactive. So I'm happy to pull one out and you can come and be my guest tomorrow in the simulcast, which is an identical experience when you'll see me on a big screen instead of in person. Um, and I'll be so brilliant tomorrow, you're just gonna love it. Um, okay, so questions. You were brilliant today as well. Oh. Don't don't sell yourself short. And I know it's not easy being on stage when you're exhausted. And we appreciate your uh, sharing that information about the evolution of TED TEDx and, and what you're doing with TEDx Pasadena. Uh, opening up to Q and A now. So if you have a question, raise your hand. Christy will walk around with the mic. Please ask questions. Comments are not allowed. We will yank that mic away from you, with uh, with pleasure. And uh, yeah. So I, I, Heather, if you're are you going to hang around with us a little bit. So if people would like to share experiences and story time and all that good stuff, offline. Uh, offline, but it's going to be fast because my entire team is over there setting up without me. Okay. Um, they've been there since five of this morning, so I need to okay, first come, first be a serve. good soldier. <laughs> I think you were, you were going to leave some business cards. Um, so if you want to connect after, um, she'll leave some business cards. Let's start here with Sam. You remember my name. Oh, I got ah. <laughs> uh, Believe me, I'm impressed. Uh, can my wife nominate me? Yes. That, of no, I, what's the basis of nominations and what's the basis of invitations? Mm -hmm. So, nominations are basically um, word of mouth getting to me saying, um, uh, I'm trying to think of it. Okay, so Amy can, who is very active here. She's on our board of directors, and I'm glad she's not in this room or I would be really pissed. She needs to be working, so she's at the Huntington right now. But Amy, as an example, came and uh, pitched the idea of this book that has been extremely valuable to her. It's called The Confidence Effect. The, the author of it is Grace Kilea. Grace lives and resides in Washington, D.C., and so we reached out to her and, and said, one of our board members has been very influenced by your work, can we talk? And, and we went from a dialogue there and it, it did result in her being on our stage. Okay. And in that case, she also... So that was both a nomination and an invitation. Kind of. Well, nomination turns into an invitation. Okay. You can nominate, but we don't have to invite. Okay. Um, the, uh, the invitations, I'll just also say, we, we um, also strip identity out. So, I, so Grace Kalea got put in the applicant pool, and I don't, I don't read. I let my team read. And they let the cream rise. And if Grace, and I tell when I make an invitation, I say this is what's going to happen, and you have to be vetted. And if you don't get vetted on a blind read, then, then you don't get to come. We make it as fair as possible. Great. Thank you. Let me head this way. Jan? I was just curious about what drove you to this initially. Uh, you're probably wondering that right now yourself. But, <laughs> but um, just a little more of your own personal story, how you came to this and, and what you get from it personally. Yeah. Um, so I, I finished my doctorate in 2015, doctorate in education. I had long spent a career in private school, um, principal level organizing school administration, passionately. Um, when I finished, I, I defended in January of 2015, and it was not a logical time to return to the classroom. Um, and a f the, the, this had just been founded. I wasn't part of the founding of this. Um, and a good friend said, oh, Ted's coming to town. You'd love it. Get involved. So I did. I, um, that year, I uh, oversaw all of the interactive space. The interactive space, by the way, is a 
intentional design to try and create, diminish the awkwardness of networking and walking up to strangers and saying hello. So we have a lot of things happening that day where you're gonna find yourself in conversation with people and it happens more naturally. Um, so I oversaw that that year and I helped with speaker curation and I loved it. And um, at the end of that cycle, the founder um, decided that it was, and it is, God bless her, but um, she decided it was too much to try and run her business and her, this. Um, so she stepped down and through a lot of dialogue and conversation, I still don't know if it was brilliance or stupidity, but I agreed <laughs> to do this. Um, I and all of my team are volunteers. I've done this for the last three years completely on volunteer. It's a full-time thing. Um, shout out to my husband because thank you. Uh, he lets me live out my dream and quite honestly that's what I get out of it. I love pulling threads out of human beings. I love helping you to articulate that one voice. I work with my speakers tirelessly so that they can in one word tell me what they're standing on this stage for. Each one could tell you it's confidence, it's courage, it's empathy. It's, and, and finding that vein of um, humanity is what makes a video go viral. I'm gonna come back here. Thank you. Uh, other than Google, is there an overall index to all of the many thousands of TED uh, mm -hmm. videos out there? Yep, very good question. Yes, um, so TED.com has all of the TED talks. TED.com um, sometimes selects a TEDx talk that they love. Brene Brown is a very good example of this, if, if you know her name. Um, Brene did a TEDx Houston talk on vulnerability. It immediately went viral. I think it's been seen like 54 million times or something like that. And TED has her on their um, main site. Um, uh, we also have our beautiful um, website that Echo Factory built for us has all of our talks from the beginning of time for our organization under each speaker. So you can see them directly there. And then you can go to the TEDx YouTube page and you can see all of the TEDx's there. You can search by idea, you can search by person, region. Yeah. Here. Hi. Um, are all your speakers required to read the book Talk Like Ted, or do you, in fact, coach them? <laughs> they are not required to read that. There is no formula to this. Um, and in fact, uh, so yes, we coach. And I'll explain that. But in fact, some TEDx's don't put as much heart and soul into their event uh, experience as we do. And I, I will take some, um, just a pat on my team's back for that. They really, really, really put professional ex um, experience and wisdom and um, drive behind this whole thing. So for, for example, um, a TED, a TEDx speaker that is going to be on our stage coming up next year. Um, she was telling me that she is giving a TED talk, a TEDx talk somewhere else. And when I, when I was explaining to her the process that we ask of our speakers, she was like, what? <laughs> you know, that's crazy. Or another example, last night we had um, uh, our, our, all of our speakers and board gather for a dinner. Um, and Drew Pinsky, Dr. Drew was there. And um, he has given a TEDx talk. And when he was hearing what we do in preparation, he was in awe. And that is why Dr. Drew, even with the name Dr. Drew, his, that TEDx video has not gone viral. And it is why one of our talks from last year that's not even eight months old is, is already hitting 900,000 views. So. It's the quality of our production and it is the um, intentionality that we put behind our coaching that make these highly, highly uh, valuable pieces for you. Um, and on that note, Ted doesn't let you own it. You sign your life away. Uh, you get a link. You can't have the hard copy and you're only ever allowed to use 30 seconds with permission in anything you ever do. 
over here is the next question. They don't own your intellectual property. Yeah. Heather, how can we support you? <gasps> oh my God, who are you? I'm, I'm Amy Wenslow, and I'd love to play with you. Oh, It'd be Amy. so fun. Brandy knows whiskey. <laughs> Thank you. Please, I. Um, you can support us. You you can help us help you. We really want to help you. We love being able to brag about Echo Factory and the fact that they are a Pasadena organization makes us even more beaming with pride. And Supply Frame, and you know we love that. Um, we need money. <laughs> uh, we offer in exchange, you know, depending on level of giving, because this, pr this production tomorrow is $100,000. Um, the Huntington is not, the, yeah, I'm on camera. Um, it, it's, it, it's hard to be able to produce an event of this scale um, and have it not be crazy expensive. So money, that helps. Uh, and we can then promote you from our website, we can promote you in print, and all of that. Um, and also patrons in the community. One of the really great things that we're so, so proud of is we, um, we bring every year girls between the ages of 13 and 18 to the event that couldn't otherwise afford to be there. Um, most of these girls are in foster care, some are homeless. Um, uh, they are underprivileged in every capacity, and they sit in the front row with our $20,000 donors. Um, they have a fabulous day. And patrons in the community make that possible. So it's, it's very, that gives me goosebumps. I'm very proud of that. Cameron. This may be a, a, a boring question or a, per, a really a interesting question. <laughs> Why 18 minutes? That ah, fascinates me. There is r substantial research to show that the human brain can't pay attention to someone rambling on as long as I just did. You have, you have tuned me out at one point. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's 18 minutes or less. There are TED Talks that are about four minutes, some of them. Uh, there are very few that go beyond 18, and it's with permission of TED. Um, and it's really so you can stay engaged and hear what's going on. Really let it process. Based on science. No, 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 no. Google Scholar, look up how long can the brain pay attention? 18 minutes or less. Next question right here. Hi. Hi. I'm a guy. Yes. And I'm straight, so I'm as far away from your organization as and I can. And you're white. Get. And I'm white. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Are you rich too? No, not oh. really. No. That's, that's the problem. <clears throat> I can see I'm a long way away. Also, I see you've got thousands of rules, you know, which to me, rules just go. I take no notice. But basically, I have a product that's a female thing that oh. the world needs and doesn't have. Organic. How do I get to somebody in yours who could then take this and promote it? Is that possible from outside, or do your rules ban anybody that's no. standing around in trousers? No. Okay. <laughs> We don't discriminate, so even trousers are welcome. Um, th that is a great question. Uh, while on the red circle, of which I'm not even standing, so I'm allowed to say anything I want, um, on the red circle, those rules apply. When protecting this brand, those rules apply. Because if I don't guard this brand, I lose my license. So outside of that, we are able to help one another. And, and you definitely should um, put, get, get your card and I'll talk. I would love to help support you. Any more questions? We have time for one more. Um, my question is, how do we get involved with you and TEDx Pasadena or TEDx Women? So um, if you didn't put your card in the box, you can sign up here. Uh, I have a little clipboard you can put your... I've got uh, cards that you can take. Our beautiful website by Echo Factory. Um, you, can, you can put in your information. Um, there are many of us around town that you can make friends with and we can go have coffee. There's a ton of ways. 
We need volunteers, we need thinkers, we need workers, we need doers. We were, we were, Mike and I were chatting quickly about volunteerism. It is so different than managing staff. You know, all my life professionally, I have, I've had leverage over paid staff. And this is a group of volunteers, and it's, it's challenging. And um, to have doers that are reliable and have integrity and are going to show up when they say they're going to show up, I will make the sky open for you. Don't drop the ball on me and help this pull off without a hitch and never make me cry. Uh, you're, I'm going to, you're good. <laughs>